Well, and for that, I'm joined now by James Creeden. Good morning, James. Good morning, Lorna. We're going to start with a German paper this morning, Die Zeit, mm -hmm. and this is because of the French-German spat. I mean, I'm not sure if it's quite a spat, but at least a <laughs> disagreement over what was said or not said yesterday at a summit in Brussels of European leaders, because Nicolas Sarkozy came out of that summit and he said that there was discussion of the Roma, uh, as, you know, there was indeed very, uh, I suppose, vociferous kind of exchanges. But uh, he more or less claimed that uh, Angela Merkel said that she was going to deport 12,000 and Roma from Germany, this because there was such a brouhaha about deportations from France, uh, and what EU diplomats called it utter fabrication. And in fact, the Chancellor's uh, government spokesperson, uh, Stefan Seibert, said that they had neither in the European Council nor in conversations uh, with French President Nicolas Sarkozy on the edge of the Council spoken about Roma camps or deportations. So the headline of that article is one person's word against another's, mm -hmm. and it, that's pretty much what it, it's come down to. And they're also saying in that, that article how the Bulgarian Prime Minister indeed spoke about very tough exchanges or blows between uh, jo Jose Manuel Barroso, the head of the European Commission, and Nicolas Sarkozy. And David Cameron sp uh, described it as a, a lively debate, which, uh, as Desite says, <laughs> exactly, is diplomatic parlance for a serious fight. Right. So if we move on to the New York Times, they're looking at the Roma, because of course all this centres on policies towards the Roma. And it's interesting to see this from the, the from the perspective of the New York Times, uh, which I suppose is a little bit at a remove from the situation. I suppose when you talk when you look at it in French papers or German papers, it's all very much what the national policies are. Here they're saying that perhaps uh, you know uh, basically it's testing Europe's open borders policies, and they're saying advocates for the Roma hope that the latest conflict will force the EU to get serious about helping the Roma. And one advocate in the Open Society Foundation says there's nothing to focus the minds of policy makers like an army of poor people heading <laughs> your way. So I suppose that's one way of looking at it. And certainly one would hope that the EU will wake up to all of the latest problems. And they go back then in the article over the history of the Roma, how many of them came from India. They were one of the poorest castes in India. Many were then enslaved in Romania and Bulgaria um, until democracy arrived and they were set free, but they were landless. So a lot of them became, I suppose, itinerant and quite poor. And they're still heavily discriminated against in these countries, uh, often put in separate maternity wards. Uh, Romanian children are off, uh, uh, Romanian um, uh, gypsy children are often put into classes with handicapped children in schools, things like that. And so they're describing the reasons why they might migrate westward. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at Le Monde, to move on to another story, David Cameron, quite oddly, has an opinion piece in Le Monde about the Pope's visit, which I thought was quite strange. Uh, this is an historic visit, he says. Let's work together despite our differences. I imagine that he might have published this or had it published in several Some European else. papers, uh, especially in perhaps more traditionally Catholic countries like France. And he says he uses the word historic. It's often exaggerated as a term, but here it's perfectly appropriate. Now, now, obviously, uh, the Pope's visit is on the front page of the British papers, the independent mission improbable. And they're talking there basically about whether or not he'll be able to escape the sex abuse scandal. And they, uh, inside, they're saying how the group of protesters in Edinburgh yesterday was very much drowned out by well-wishers, 125,000 well-wishers. They also speak about a gaffe by Prince Philip, which caught my attention more than yeah. a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the uh, discussion. Or has been in the past. <laughs> he has been prone to them. He was speaking to the Scottish Conservative leader uh, called... Annabel Goldie, and apparently she was wearing a special papal tartan tie, and Philip said, have you got a pair of knickers made out of those? <laughs> <laughs> is that so, a gaffe? Is that banter? I it's think a hard she, was line. Yeah. she was amused. She was amused. I'm not sure if you could thing, quite perhaps. call it a gaffe. He said worse in the past, hasn't he? <laughs> I think so. So uh, <laughs> another man who's not known for, uh, for I suppose, his um, his kindly words is perhaps Ian Paisley, and he was there in flying form yesterday. And they show the, the, the Independent is saying it shows that Rome's enemies are not all secular, because in fact um, it, there were lots of signs such as condom save lives, but there were also some evangelical Christians mm -hmm. such as Ian Paisley who were opposing the trip. And and he told the media he was not there to receive the Pope's blessing. I suppose no one's surprised about that. <laughs> and some other front pages, uh, the battle over faith on the front page of the Times. Now, we'll move on uh, to um, the New York Times, which has uh, put some interesting photos for us this morning. Have a look at this photo of Hosni Mubarak. Now, this appeared on the front page of al Ahram's website. That's a, an Egyptian-based website. Now, um, there's something quite uh, stark, about, uh, something quite unusual about this photo. I'm not sure if we have it. Um, here, we do, here we have it. He's out on front there. This was in Washington at the White House on the 1st of September. Except if we have a look at the next graphic, it shows the actual original photograph. Uh, 
and I'm not sure if we have it. It shows Mubarak not exactly in the foreground, as you would expect, because mm -hmm. why, of course, would he be in the foreground at the White House? Indeed. You would expect uh, Obama to be out on front, and indeed, in fact he is. <laughs> that's where he actually was. He was, uh, you know, trailing behind on the extremity of, uh, on the flanking, I suppose, the various leaders. Extraordinary stuff. They photoshopped it and put him out on front, uh, rather <laughs> improbably, at the White House. That's now, fantastic. that's that. And uh, we'll just very quickly in Gawker, I just want to very quickly show this at the end. Trying to, they're trying to show how sh slow the internet is in rural England. And uh, so a guy set off two carrier pigeons which travel 120 kilometers an hour with a little video, which actually got to its destination faster than the YouTube video was downloading on Wonderful. line. The YouTube so, video of the same incident. Exactly. It, only, it was only 25% downloaded Wonderful. by the time they reached their destination. That's absolutely great. Thank you very much indeed, James Creedon, for that look at all this morning's international headlines. You were watching In the Papers, presented by Pullman Hotels.